Hello, my name is John and today we'll be reading Impeach Trump's Impeachers. They're Dirty and Crooked as Hell by Daniel Greenfield on FrontPageMagazine.com on June 16th, 2017. Daniel Greenfield is a Shulman Journalism Fellow at the Freedom Center. It is an investigative journal, journal and he is a writer focusing on the radical left and Islamic terrorism. The rush to impeach President Trump is on by an opposition party that lacks the votes, evidence, or legal basis for such a move. But since when did an illegal left-wing coup need any of those things? No Democrat has been more honest about the real motive for impeachment than Congressman Ted Lieu. We should not give him a chance to govern, Lou had declared after Trump had been in office for 10 days, and he predicted that, I do believe that if we win back the House of Representatives, impeachment proceedings will be started. What was the basis for impeaching President Trump after 10 days in office? Lou made it clear that if the Democrats won, they would try to impeach Trump no matter what. That's not how things work in the United States. But the left is running America like a banana republic. More recently, Lou had mused that a recent poll came out saying that 46% of Americans want the president impeached, and certainly members of Congress take notice. And what better basis could there be for impeachment than popular Dem support for the move? The latest poll from PPP, the notorious left-wing troll pollsters Lou is relying on, shows 75% of Democrats support impeaching President Trump. PPP did not provide any justification, nor was any needed. President Trump had to be forced out of office to reverse the results of the 2016 election. The legal basis for such proceedings was as irrelevant as any coup in a banana republic. Congressman Liu is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. He's indicated recently that he's researching impeachment. His statement on being appointed to the committee claimed that Trump had lost the popular vote and that he would fight like hell on the Judiciary Committee against him. Since Liu has made it clear that his pursuit of impeachment is based on partisan opposition, not evidence, any such action would be an unethical abuse of power whose goal is not justice, but a conspiracy to prevent the President of the United States from even having the chance to govern. This could lead to censure and even expulsion, the congressional alternative to impeachment. Congressman Brad Sherman, shown on the left, has drafted articles of impeachment for President Trump. The claims in Sherman's draft contradict, in part, Comey's testimony, even as it claims to be based on it. But it still puts the California politician ahead as the first to put forward a written legislative call for impeachment. But that's only because most of his rivals can't write. Congressman Al Green, shown here, called for the impeachment of President Trump on the House floor in the name of liberty and justice for all, and also government of the people, by the people, for the people. And how better to stand for government by the people than with a shameless attempt to overturn the results of a democratic election and for liberty and justice for all than to undertake it baselessly. No one is above the law, Al Green declared, except maybe Green, who was accused of sexual assault by a former aide. Green, in turn, accused her of blackmail. This isn't Green's first call for impeachment. A previous Green statement, which read like it was written by a high school dropout who had been watching too many legal dramas. 
a bedrock premise upon which respect for and obedience to our societal norms is no one is above the law, concluded with, our mantra should be ITN, impre impeach Trump now. That's been the mantra ever since Trump won. Sherman and Green are far behind Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who has been calling for the impeachment of every Republican since Ulysses S. Grant. Last month, she complained that the public was weary that Trump still hadn't been impeached. I believe that this man has done enough for us to determine that we can connect the dots, that we can get the facts that will lead to impeachment. If anyone ought to be at Peach, it is Waters who funneled $750,000 to her daughter and used her influence to help arrange for the taxpayer bailout of a bank linked to her husband. But Waters has made it obvious that it's not about the law. It's about undoing the election results. At the Center for American Progress, Waters rejected waiting until the next election. We can't wait that long. We don't need to wait that long. Pointing to left-wing polls backing impeachment, she screeched, What more do we need in the Congress of the United States of America? Maybe evidence? Waters had already admitted that there was no actual evidence, but impeachment should move forward anyway. There isn't any evidence for impeachment, but there is documented evidence that Waters can't tell Crimea from Korea. Much as there is evidence that Congressman Sheila Jackson Lee, who also called for Trump's impeachment, can't tell WikiLeaks from Wikipedia. Sheila Jackson Lee insisted that Trump should be impeached if he doesn't prove Obama's eavesdropping. If you do not have any proof, she rambled, then you are clearly on the edge of the question of public trust, and those actions can be associated with high crimes and misdemeanors for which articles of impeachment can be drawn. The only high crimes belonging to Sheila Jackson Lee, who had once declared on CNN, I represent Enron, she should have gone to jail along with its top bosses. Lee had also claimed that the Constitution is 400 years old and that she was a freed slave. I'm concerned about what happened when we get that call about North Korea in the middle of the night, she blathered. You have in office an individual that is unread and unlearned, and this is coming from a woman who had confused North Korea and Vietnam. Meanwhile, Sheila Jackson Lee had been investigated by the Health Ethics Committee for a trip to Aber, Aber, Azerbaijan, paid for by the state oil company of Azerbaijan. Sokar had a joint venture with Rosneft. Back then that meant Vladimir Putin. Maybe Sheila Jackson Lee ought to impeach herself. I think about impeachment every single day, Congressman Eddie Bernice Johnson said, and well, she should. Johnson pushed Congressional Black Caucus scholarships that were supposed to go to deserving students to her relatives. She even sent letters directing that the money be paid to them, not the colleges, in violation of the Foundation rules. And then she went on CNN and lied about it. The loudest voices in Congress calling for impeachment don't belong in Congress. That's typical enough. This was the second presidential election this century whose outcome Democrats decided to reject because it was won by a Republican. And they played the same exact game then, too. Eleven years ago, Maxine Waters had called for President Bush's impeachment. House Resolution 635 pushing for impeachment was sponsored by Congressman Conyers, whose wife would be convicted of bribery charges. Congressional co-sponsors co included Maxine Waters, Sheila Jackson Lee, Jesse Jackson Jr., who was sent to prison for mail fraud, 
Charlie Rangel, who was found guilty of 11 ethics violations, Bernie Sanders, whose wife is under FBI investigation for the Burlington College fraud, and Bob Filner, who was convicted of false imprisonment and battery. The only consistent thing about Democrats' call for impeachment is that it's impeachers who are dirty and crooked as hell. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. My name is John Brooker and you can reach me through commentary on this video or through my Gmail listed here. Please share this video with friends and family and on social media. May God richly bless you.